Shout with our hands to heaven. Magnify the King of all kings to glorify his name forever. Let's give him praise and glory. Let's exalt him. Let's consciously magnify his name. Let's thank him for the testimonies. Let's thank him for the miracles, signs, and wonders. Let's appreciate him for the things he has done in the lives of people. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have given thanks. Father, we thank you because nobody could have done all this except you. You are the one who has done all to you. Be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Before I share God's word, commanding exploits, which is the message for today. I was studying the day before yesterday and I stumbled to something I shared with the pastors. Just for you to just hear because God's word is new every morning. It's not the message for today, please. Just hear it. I was studying and I saw in Genesis 24, if you read 12 to about 20, when Abraham wanted a wife for Isaac, he sent his servant to go and get a wife for him. And the Bible said when he got there, he prayed the simple prayers. And the young lady who came, Rebecca who came to the well, had to fetch water, not for him alone, but for all the camels he came with. And if you know how to camels drink water, they don't take one, they take a lot. So she went in, fetched water, came back again. Fetched water, came back again. And then <laughs> it was not a small exercise. Before Nina recommended her and asked her background and said she would be the wife of Isaac. What am I saying? Believers, don't marry a wife who is not sacrificial. And don't marry a husband who is not sacrificial. The best way to know your wife is somebody who will go all out sacrificially to do something for God without eye service. She was not looking for a husband. She didn't plan to marry. The man was a servant, so there was no personality in him. There was nothing in him. There was nothing to show that he was a great man, being a servant. But she was busy giving water to the camels, giving water to the man himself. Then they said, this is the woman. Every time you want to marry, or you look for the person who is not serving God with any eye service, who go all out sacrificially, that is the person who you should marry. Are you hearing me? Did you hear what I said? He didn't pray, oh God, bring me a very fine, so a very beautiful woman. That was not his prayer. He didn't, he didn't say, oh God, bring a woman who is very attractive. He didn't say, oh God, bring the best usher. She was ready to serve. Sacrifice. My wife was sweeping the whole witness chapel up alone. Now these days, women want to marry men, marry women who just give their money without making sacrifice. No. No. If you want to marry a good person, look at how the person is serving God. Sacrificially, without eye. That is the greatest quality of your, your spouse you want to marry. Man. Or woman, because these days there are so many fake women and fake men in church. <laughs> Once they marry, they stop. So don't marry somebody because it's an usher. Don't marry somebody because it's the choir. Marry because the person is serving God without people noticing that the person is serving. That's the, if you like, you hear. <laughs> okay, let's go. Commanding exploits. We are still in the mother of the Holy Spirit, my helper. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it's about those, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do what? Exploits. Now here is an army well to command exploits. Your mind plays a vital role, a key role, your mind. To succeed or fail is a function of what goes on in your mind. Your mind is whatever you permit to magnify. Whatever you magnify in your mind will tell me what happen in your life. The world of exploits is in your mind. Man is three-dimensional, he's a spirit. He has a soul, he lives in the body. 
The spirit, we all know, we develop, we are born again, we pray, we fast. But the mind is what determines your earthly success. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And your prosperity. We take care of our body. Many of us, we, we take time to rub good cream, we wear perfume, we make, what do you call it, makeup. We buy good hair, we take care of ourselves. But this place, many are dormant here. People don't develop here, so they are not doing exploits. They are not doing what? Exploits. There is no amount of fasting without mental development that make you do exploits. It is the use of the brain that determines your level of gains. The mind is the bedrock of all gains in life. You will make gains after today. If the mind is that useful and that powerful, why do I leave my mind fallow? That's where I'm going. Why must I not tax my mind to produce results and do exploits? The level of your mental development will determine how you make impact on the earth. Every man's result is a function of his mental development. I was just meditating day for yesterday. In my deep meditation while lying down, I noticed that people are rushing for quick appointment. People are rushing for quick money, but they don't rush for impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You can be very wealthy and not be impactful. <laughs> impact is different from wealth. There are presidents who have ruled nations, and today if they pass anywhere, nobody will greet them. And there are people, when they pass anywhere, people will stop. Impact is not money. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are presidents of nations, including your nation, who, after they've left office, even at the airport, nobody say, how are you? That means they never had impact. They never had what? Impact. Don't mistake occupying position to mean impact. It's mental development that means what? Impact. So here. How to command exploits through your mind? How to command what? Exploits through your mind. Number one. Don't consider obstacles. Don't consider what? Obstacles. In Mark 9 to 3, Jesus said unto him, not to them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If thou canst what? If your mind can stand on the integrity of God's word, there will be no impossibility. I'll give you a typical example of a man called Abraham. In Romans chapter 4, 19 to 21. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, which means his body was, he was important in modern language. Are you getting it now? When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of sinners womb. At hundred, he was important. He was what? At hundred. He staggered not that the promise of God through what? But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully what? That what God has promised, he was able also to perform. Listen, this is where I'm going. If you want to do exploits, your mind must be close to negative factors. Abraham's mind was close to negative what? He said he considered not. Where do you consider things? Where do you consider things? Oh, I'm, I'm old. Will anybody come for me again? Where are you considering? My mind. The, by background. How can you mind make it? Where are you considering? My mind. You can't do exploits if you consider negative thoughts. Refuse to be clouded with thoughts of impossibilities. As not to lose your Christian dignity. I pray you will not lose it. Stand on the integrity of God's word. That's how to do exploits. So I hear. Because God is not a man that he should lie. That is not a man that he should repent. Number 23, verse 19. 
So anything God says, stand on it. Don't allow your mind shift. I mean, understand what I'm talking about. You can't do exploits, your mind living in doubt. Now hear this and hear me well. When we are to come to Port Harcourt, the mind had a great role to play for you to do exploits. People physically called me and said, why are you going to Port Harcourt? Please, don't go to Port Harcourt. If you want to be successful in ministry, then stay in Lagos where you are. Because Lagos was a hub of success in growth for ministry. Then Abuja, number two. Outside those two places, everyone is afraid, afraid to have a mega ministry because they feel that any other place, you will not make it. So my mind was already a battleground whether to go or not to go. Is that clear, sir? Glory to God. The impossibilities began to say, is it possible to make it? Two scriptures was what made me, and I've shared it with you. I said, no way. I saw, and I've been sharing it with you over and over. Until you do, you see it. As 10, 34, 35. Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive, God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feared him and walked in righteousness as if with him. It's no respecter. So I said, if people are making it anywhere, then I can make it in Port Harcourt. Is that clear? Glory to God. And Romans 12, 10 verse 12, there's no difference between the Jew and what? For the same Lord is over all his feet to all that call upon him. So with these two scriptures, I stood my ground. I said, listen, I refuse to be clad my mind with impossibilities. If it's possible anywhere, if it has happened in Lagos, it can happen in Port Harcourt. You can't do exploits until your mind consciously refuse impossibility thoughts. Is that clear? Abraham did not stagger. He did not what? He said, God, he said so, this is it. I pray your mind will accept the truth. You know, we have spiritual warfare, but I think it's time for you to have mental warfare. Mental warfare gives you more victory than spiritual warfare. Do you know if you, if you pray and you doubt, you still not succeed? Many don't know. God is able to do exceedingly above all that we can what? Ask, where do you ask? Prayer. Or what? Thinking is where? So your thinking and your asking, they weigh the same. I come again. Ephesians 3.20, is that true? God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are what? Ask why? Ask his prayer. Ask his what? Or what? Where is, do you think? So your prayer and your talk, they weigh one. That's why if you're praying, oh God, make me a multi-billionaire, and you're thinking, ah, I'm from below. Your thinking will destroy your prayers. And many of us will pray, oh God, open doors for me. Open doors for me. Make me prosper. Let it be good. Ah, I'm a woman. No. They have already destroyed the prayers. Oh God, bless me. Anywhere, God, bless me. Everywhere I go, bless me. They look at yourself. They see at my face, whoa, whoa. Um, you know, <laughs> your thoughts control your life. Number two, say, I, I will not consider obstacles again. Say it one more time. Why are you not consider? Giants were real. Even the 12 spies, none of them denied there were no giants. But two said, the giants are not our issue. Nobody's saying it would be deception to say there's no hardship in the land. But we don't consider the hardship. Do you understand? We are not saying there's no hardship, but don't consider it. I don't understand. It's no preacher should tell there's no hardship. It's that deception. That's what? Deception. There's hardship. But you don't consider the hardship in your mind. Hmm? You're sick. But you don't consider the sickness. You consider the word of God. Are you getting me now? There's no deception when you're sick to say, <laughs> you're sick. That's the truth. But... You don't consider the sickness, you consider the word of God. You don't allow the sickness to become an obstacle to your healing. Do you, I mean, understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. Number two, how to command exploits through your mind? Guard your thoughts. Guard your what? Your thoughts. G A G U A R D. G U A R D. Guard. Not guide. Guard your thoughts. 
Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of faith are the issues of life. Stop carrying obstacle thoughts when you are looking for miracles. Keep thy heart. It's not talking about the one that pumps blood. Keep your mind. The Bible calls it, it's also your mind. Is that true? Let me say this to you. You are not permitted to think anyhow. It's not scriptural. It's not what? You are not permitted to think anyhow. <laughs> Let's read Philippians 4, 8. Want to go. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise. So outside this, don't think. Every time you're thinking, ask yourself, this is what I'm thinking. Is it godly? Does it have Are you going to sit down? This thing I'm thinking, is it in line with the word of God? If it's not in line with the word of God, guard your heart. Anything you're thinking that contradicts God's word, don't accept it if you want to do exploits. So I hear. He said, don't be conformed to this world, be what? By the renewing of your mind, Romans 12 verse 2. So consciously renew your mind by not accepting anything that contradicts God's word. Refuse to be carnally minded. Refuse to be what? Now listen. Two sets of people would, would suffer the same thing. The wages of sin to be carnally minded. So the sinner and the man who is carnally minded will end the same place. If you are born again and you are carnally minded, you will suffer what the man who does not accept Christ suffer. He said to be, the wages of sin to be carnally, Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded. A carnal man thinks about what he sees what he smells, the things he hears. Like now, many of many people are so carnal that all they think about is what they hear on news, not the word of God. Pastor, leave what you're talking. This is what I read from the news. I read from newspaper. The thing you read is contradicting the word of God. So I hear. So guide your thoughts. Guide your what? Your thoughts. I was very proud last week when I was we were in the United States when a preacher, an American preacher, stopped and said, you, I know you very well, you're a Nigerian preacher, that Nigerian churches is the one that made us to stand strong in faith in America. He said, when the strange law of sex, marriage, what you call it, um, gay marriage, he said, all the Nigerian churches said no. So they were the ones who gave them faith to be able to stand strong. That every American almost vowed to it. But Nigeria church said, no way. They stood their ground. They would never do that. I was proud. So not everything about Nigeria is bad. He said the Nigerian churches in America said they would never marry gay marriage. Do anything you like. So the faith of the Nigerian churches is what strengthened the American churches. Because the American churches were shaking. All the Nigerian churches in America said, no way. They would never wed anybody who is man a man. Because their mind was stayed on the word of God. God never created Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. Not Eve and Evelyn. <laughs> but if uh, you, their mind was on the word of God. So I hear. So guide your what? You want to do exploits? Guide your thoughts. Even the thought of evil comes from where? Your mind. You can't commit morality. You first think you strip the woman naked from where? Your mind. As if I sleep with her. You already have. Your, that time, the moment you are seeing the woman and say, see the way she look, you have already destroyed the mind. So when that thought is coming, shut it and say, no way, this is not what I should think of. Because some people don't think of anything ungodly. All they think is about. No, that I know. So, look, human mind is very powerful. When you sit down, mind what you think. Don't be thinking rubbish. 
Well, your man can tell you, look at this man. She has a handsome. Look at this woman. She has a fine. No, no, no. Tell yourself, no, 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 no. Mind, you're going off. You are going off. Come back. He thinks it's only failure and success. Mind thinks rubbish. Have you, some of you not seen a woman, you forgot your hearing. <laughs> then your wife tap you, say, hey, my husband, look well. <laughs> <laughs> you are driving and then he just, your wife is looking at you and he's staring and you just look from the middle, look, 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 your wife say, my husband, look here now. <laughs> Where did he come from? You've already slept the woman from your mind. So guide your mind. If you want to do exploits, shout hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. It said, Thou will keep him. Let's do it together. One to go. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted on thee. If you don't get any scripture, get the scripture on this section. You know what he's saying? Anyhow, Satan shakes you, stand on the word in your mind. The battleground is where? He will hit like, so let me explain to you with physical illustration. If a criminal comes to hit your gate, boom, 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 Are you permitted to open the gate? As long as the gate is shut, will he have access? That's how the mind is. Satan will bombard your mind with all manner of thoughts. You will fail. You'll be useless. You are nothing to write home about you. As he's hitting, back, 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 back. Stand on the integrity of the world on the inside. You will succeed. Are you going to answer now? He will look at you and say, look at you. Nobody will marry you. Nobody will marry you. Nobody will marry you. Your life is finished. He says, shut up. I'll get married. I'll get married. You come again. You marry? No way. Your time has ended with your age. Finish. No, you will never be rich. Your family poor. Your grandfather poor. Your great grandfather poor. You too now poor. Staying at one room in water side. You will die poor. Tell him, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. If the blessing of God make it rich, God is the one who will bless me. Promotion coming from him. You come again. You say promotion coming from me. Then why are you not promoted? Shut up. I'll be promoted. You keep your mind on the word of God. That's how you gain victory. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. So your victory, your triumph, your prosperity, your success, healing, signs and wonders are the experiences of them whose mind has stayed on God and his word. So here. Until you think evil, you don't see evil. Let me say this to you and write it down verbatim. No one knows your thoughts, but your results in life prove whether you are negative or positive. I come again. No one knows what. Thoughts are not visible, but the results will show what you're thinking. No one knows what. You can't change your life until you change the way you think. The results of anybody will show what the person is what? Thinking. I told them something that shook them as I was studying. I called the young man. And I said, people don't have marital problem in marriage. No. no. Please, listen. Nobody has marital problem. What? It's a character you formed from childhood that you did not work on that destroyed the marriage. I showed you from, uh, from scriptures. Every marriage that crashed was not in the marriage problem. That is a childhood problem that was not resolved and corrected that was taken into the marriage. You were very stubborn. You were very saucy. Your parents did not correct you. You were always arrogant. They talked to you. You, you said, no, nobody should talk to you. So from child character, so when you got into the marriage, that character did not change. So that character enter, entered into the marriage. That's how the marriage crashed. Every marriage that crashed is a character from childhood, not, a, not in the marriage. It's not the marriage the character. Started. So you have to deal with your childhood problem. Do you understand? It's not in the marriage the problem started. It's a problem that started from childhood. So that has to be corrected. It has to be what? Corrected. You are saucy. Everybody talks to you. Just say, no, no, no. Nobody should talk to you. You are so proud. So even in the marriage, when you are corrected, you say, no, get out. You can't talk to me. Who are you? 
So it is not in the marriage they started. It's the problem of a, it's a childhood problem. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everything any of us is going through is a childhood problem that was not corrected, that was carried into adulthood. It's not in the adulthood you started it. You are drinking small, small when your parents kept drink. You still small. You, know, you still. You pour water inside the gin. <laughs> Bring it to the same level. So your parents will not know that you drank the gin. It started small, small. <laughs> It didn't start from adult. It didn't, nobody. You know, this is the papa who tell you, he said 50 years. How many years? He's not in the old age, he started in their hem. He said, what was the young man? 50 years, that means he started as a young man. They don't learn smoking in old, in old age. Did you get the testimony? Have you seen anybody from CC start smoking? Not one. He started smoking from youth. Nobody will learn how to smoke at 60. You don't chase women as sisters. Something you are chasing when you are, you know. So you have to deal with the childhood problem. Otherwise, everything that manifests in your life is a problem of childhood. Now the Bible says, to any child, the way it should. Nobody has mental crisis. Did not carry a problem from childhood. She was so arrogant, or he was so proud. And you tell him, and if you tell him, he says, no, 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 no. If you notice, notice all male who are born as single men. Maybe they have sisters and it's the only boy. Check them. They might treat their wives. Very few. Because anybody born amongst women is always pampered. Don't touch him. He's my only son. If you want to talk to him, leave him alone. So he feels that even his wife should deal with him like that. Forget that that's his wife. They eat alone. They, don't for, they forget even their wives. So if the wife will complain, why are you so selfish? It's not his fault. It's a childhood problem. So the same thing to a sister who is alone amongst boys. They pamper her, leave her high. She's a one-legged sister. If you touch her. So she feels that if a man talks to her small, she will just withdraw. Because in the house, nobody talks to her. So small thing, she'll just withdraw. I will, I will pack my thing, come out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a childhood problem. So until you deal with that childhood problem, the situation can, solution can never come. The mind has a role to play. Shout hallelujah. So we must embark on a positive reprogramming of our mind. On positive what? Reprogramming of the mind. You have to reprogram the mind. You have to do what? I will tell you a life story. I used to be very angry. My anger level was demonic. I've used knife to stone my own blood brother. Knife. Stone him like this. I would have killed somebody. God forbid. And when I became born again, I reprogrammed my mind. And my name happens to be Anger. I won't, I won't call the name again. <laughs> Literal name I was bearing in translation means anger. Name has power. power. Sunday, some people ask the name. Name has power. And it was reflecting in my nature. So I had to reprogram my mind with the word of God. I know that this is a childhood problem. That if I get angry one day, I will destroy a church. Yes. Moses has anointed. It was only anger that made him to not read the promised land. A angry man can come up one day and say, Oh, everybody will be this job. You're all stupid. You're all stupid. You're all stupid. You're all, absolutely all stupid. Uh, the members look at him and say, Ah, Oga, you do okay. How can you say we're all stupid? So I told myself, Work on yourself. So I had to reprogram myself. So there has to be a reprogramming. A reward? You know, if you, if you have read the book, Man's Transformation Cycle, you understand what I'm teaching. You can't do exploits if your mind is not a program. Shout hallelujah. So get that book, Man's Transformation Cycle. In any area. Let me tell you, you cannot overcome immorality until you reprogram your mind. Until what? Forget you can't. You will die to sex the day you program your mind. Otherwise, every woman you see, you want to sleep. Don't say I'll bind the devil, you won't bind. 
But the moment you bind him, one fire girl will come again. <laughs> As you're finishing binding the prayer, you just stand by your door. How are you there now? So your mind has to be what? The program to die to sort things. That's the only way you can overcome it. Shout hallelujah. How to boost your mind for express? How to what? Boost your mind for express. How to boost your mind? For experts. Number one, study. Number one, what? Study. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. It said, I, Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, I, Daniel, understood by books. There are things God has said about you, you will never know anything about them except you go to read. Now, many of us, we know that scripture, but you know it was in Jeremiah chapter 11 that Daniel, it was prophesied that after 70 years they will live. Is that true? It was when Daniel read Jeremiah 29 that Daniel saw what was written concerning him. So Daniel wouldn't have known what was really concerning him until he read the Bible. Is that true? So take time to read. Take time to do what? To know what God has said concerning you. I pray your eyes will be open to the truth. That way you boost your worth, your mind. I don't think failure because I know no matter where I go, I will succeed. That's not a God. Yesterday I was talking to the pastors and I said, look, there is no land that a church should not grow because Jesus is the head of the church. And if he's the head, anywhere he goes, People gather, true? Just the program of the mind. There's nowhere Jesus went. Even the wilderness, they rushed for him. And if he's the head of the church, so no matter the location, people should come. It's not, oh, I'm in a lily. Oh, I'm in a bibo. Anywhere you are, people will come because the head of the church is a crowd puller. Just the program of what? The mind. I wish I was to be in Portagon. I wish I was to be in Abuja when I got the money. There are many churches who cannot pay rent in Abuja. It is not the place, it's your mind. That's how powerful the mind is. So study. Do what? Study. A great man called Paul in 2 Timothy 4.13. Hear what Paul said. The cloak that I left at Troas with Capos, when that comes, bring with thee and the books, but especially the what? My notes. Bring them. Improve your mind by rubbing your mind with higher brains how do you do that? Listen and read their materials. Iron, sharpen it. Proverbs 29, 27, verse 17. Now, the Bible is the greatest of all books for experts. Where is the greatest book? The Bible. Everything we are looking for, where is it? In the Bible, for experts. Another way to boost your mind is by wise association. By wise what? Proverbs 13, verse 20. He that walketh with the wise, and the company of mumus shall be full of mumus. Keep your company with what? You become a mumu yourself. I went to a deep study of this I'm reading something on the mind. And I was talking. By association, you will hear. That's why you must know who you talk with. Who you talk with affects you. Let me explain to you. Who converses with you affects your mind? If you're walking in a place where you're very close to somebody and the person is negative, 30% of your potentials will die. And if you're talking to somebody who is very sharp, the potential in you will also increase. That's why every time you're conversing, watch what the conversation is leading to. If you're rubbing your mind with somebody who is always mentally sound, you'd be, you'd be surprised your mind will grow minimum 30%. And if you're rubbing your mind with somebody who is mentally very low, you will come down. Iron sharpened iron. Wood will never sharpen iron. He said, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Evil communication. If you want to sharpen your mind, mind the company you keep. I sat with my mentor a few minutes. Then for yesterday, but within a few minutes, my mind was like this, like electric. 
As I was talking to him, light was just coming. Bah, 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 Don't stay around stupid people. Stupidity is different from ignorance. Ignorance is that you don't know. But stupid that you don't want to know who knows. Me and me. Ignorance is not knowing. But stupidity is not knowing who knows. I was just it has a trend, now for instance, association how powerful it is. You know, as a trend, you see young men keep funny bears. Even pastors keep it. You say, why do they keep it? It's not the way to win young people. Is that not true? You see, pastors keep, even pastors keep some kind of funny bears. These, uh, these bears that our other people in the other faith keep. These uh, Taliban kind of bears. They say, why do you keep it? They say, that's the way young people become born. Have you not had it? They say, to meet the young, you have to keep that bears. Have you had it before? You've not had it? They say, why are you keeping this kind of beer? They say, that's the way young people will come to church. I say, so you have to be a prostitute to convert an harlot. <laughs> you hear me? If I have to keep bears to win young people, that means to you to convert an harlot, you have to be a prostitute. That's what you're saying. Do you have to be a prostitute to convert an harlot? Didn't you hear me? Get it. Get me. He <laughs> said, this is why you're keeping bears. Is because that way you can bring young people to church. So I did to the keep bears. So that means to convert and hallowed, you have to be a prostitute. That's what you're saying. No, you can't be like the person you want to convert. I'm not understand, man. If I want to convert somebody, I can't be like the person. All those things are rubbish. I'm not against keeping bears, but you can't keep bears like a Taliban. You're a Christian. You keep bears like this. No, no. Don't say sky. It's, yeah, yeah, not different from a Taliban. Osama Bin Laden. That's the identity of those people. The first identity you know is this way. So when you put it like that, you also say you are like that. Okay. You say Moses kept bears. Why not carry a rod? <laughs> Why did you carry keep all the bears? But carry a rod now, they walk everywhere. They carry rod. <laughs> carry what? Oh. Where do their standards and that cloth? <laughs> I told a young boy, I said, cut your hair. He said, why? As have you seen the first 30 billionaires in the world who kept hair? Not one. Check your Google. Even as unbelievers as they are, none of them kept a bushy hair. It's only basketballers and musicians. Not one among the first 30 to 50 billionaires in the world kept bushy hair. So, why? Bushy hair means you are not going to be a billionaire. <laughs> wear your earring. Not one president, senator, billionaire, including America, wears your earring. I mean men, not women. So, by keeping that, you are saying you will never be a top man. There's a class you have already put yourself in. Are you hear that? And you are associated with such messes. And I saw one of my sons. I said, boy, your hair is too bushy. I'm sure you cut it and give me so I can wear it as weak. A laugh. <laughs> I said, okay, cut your hair and give me. And I gave him a condition. I said, if you don't cut it, when I meet you next time, I won't pray for you. Is he hearing me? If you see his hair, I can wear it as weak. Complete. That's if you cut it, I can wear it as weak. <laughs> uh, if I wear weak, I come to church. Even you, you will cause a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm preaching, you don't leave preaching and say, Chai, Papa, something's wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> One day, my wife said she went to a church. The man wore big tie, tie like this. <laughs> that the tie was so big and the man was very tall. So the tie was here. She said she could not concentrate in the church. <laughs> <laughs> she saw the man very tall and then one tie that was big. She said, You won't preach it. You know, I said, What kind of dressing is this? <laughs> So even your dressing can confuse people. So take time. Stop associating with the wrong people. So I should what? And let me say this, Otto. Every time you are close to somebody, ask yourself, what am I adding to this person's life? Nobody will let go of a valuable association. Because every association is adding to you, subtracting from you, multiplying you, or dividing you. So ask yourself, which group do you belong? Are you adding, subtracting, multiplying, 
or divided. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are, look, there are people who will never let you go because of your impact you have. Even when you want to go, they say, please don't go. Do you know why people leave this church? I don't worry. You'll come back. Ask me why. The impact. You walk, 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 walk. When you I say, well, look, I go back to where I come from. <laughs> you know, this church is a combination of high level of hospitality, the word, the miraculous, we care. So everything is this idea. And we meet the desires of even the youth. That's of have time out with Jesus. So when you walk out, walk out, walk out, you go come back. You know, when we are small, we hate principles that tell us the truth. You say, I don't like this principal. You will not allow me to go to cinema. But when you leave school, you say, that was my best principal. Whoever tells you the truth, you won't like him at the first time. When you want to be matured as a Christian, you love the person. All of you went to Sunday schools where you did body. So it's not so. You hate principal that tells you the truth. You say, if you go for cinema, I deal with you. You say, this wicked principal of a, a, a CMGS Baptist High School and Comprehensive. For what? All these wicked, wicked principals. For what? Holy Rosary. Equality. I don't like this principal. But when you became mature, that's the principal you say you love. So also, when they tell you the truth, you won't like it. No, 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 man no, woman no, for church. Everything goes no, 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 how do you boost your mind? By meditation. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his Lord that he meditate what? Yeah, night. And shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall what? Do you want to do exploits? Meditate. Do what? Meditation is concentrated mental attention. Meditation is what? That's good. You focus on one subject. You roll it. You roll it. You roll it until you enter your spirit man. Now, when I was sick and I wanted exploits, I sat with Matthew 8, 17 himself. Himself took. I concentrated on that scripture. Himself took. Himself took. If he took, I don't have it. Himself took. Himself took. Then, all of a sudden, I say, I'm healed. Are you going to say now? You give that scripture a mental what? Concentrated mental attention. You roll. I had pains on my kidneys. I said, if the spirit of God dwells in the dead, it shall quicken my mortal body. Quicken my mortal body. Quicken all of a sudden. Up. Pains left. So, you sit with the word of God until your spirit man picks it. it you know, even in natural, when you put a focus, is it what you call a focus, look, look, um, lens, right in, when we're small, under the sun, it will burn the paper. What do you call it? Is it a focal? That thing that is light, like this. What do you call it? Magnifying whatever. You put under sun and paper. That is how it is. When you focus on a particular thing, you just get catch fire there. Are you going to answer now? For instance, now you want to prosper. Just focus on the word of God. If I be willing and what? So I just, if I keep obeying, I'll prosper. If I keep obeying, I'll prosper. So when somebody wants to make you to disobey, he says, I will obey. True? Just focus. Psalm 119 97 to 100. He said, Oh, how love I thy law. Is my meditation all the day. He said, To thou, to thy commandments, have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. 
For thy testimonies are my meditation. I sit with the word of God. And I say, this is what God says. Say right here. This book of the law shall not Joshua 1 8, shall not depart out of what? Thou shalt what? Meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way what? Express, and then thou shalt have good success. I meditate on the word of God. You are giving, and all of a sudden it tells you, you are giving, you are poor. He says, shut up. Sit and my harvest, my harvest must come. He will come again, Sit will come again. If you are giving, then why are you not rich? He said, when the cloud is full, it will empty itself. You sit on the word of God. You meditate. You do what? Meditate. You listen deeply. Meditation. Listen to what? Deeply. Come, let us listen together. Isaiah 118. And they shall eat the good of the land. Verse 19. You will not fail. Finally, by impartation. By what? You boost your mind by impartation. This is where we do the practicals. How many of you want to be imparted? Impartation of the Holy Ghost will make your mind do that. 1996, I wanted mental exploits. I saw the way Bishop Wade for reasons. He reasons at the frequency that is not academics. His reasoning level is surpassing. He listens at a frequency that is not school. So I just said, how can a man listen like this? Then it was only HND he had before he did his PhD. I said, how can a man listen? This, this is not school. This is not school. This is beyond school. This is not academics. You know, there's mathematics and there's life matters. This man's wisdom is not found here. When he's talking... You know, matter your qualification, you look stupid before him. I said, I like this kind of Christianity. So, as I was still, I began to ask God for wisdom for one year. I was not praying for power. I never prayed. I just was asking God, so God, give me wisdom. Because I discovered that 95% of ease is wisdom. All that is are just 5%. Because it's the principal thing. Every other thing is vice principal. I asked God for wisdom, I asked God for wisdom, I asked God for wisdom, I asked God for wisdom. Then 1996, I knew when I got it. That if you see me operate, it's not school. I don't operate, I don't operate at school level, I operate at surpassing super intelligence. Then the first class student was, first class, when those kind of people, when they carry first, who will be struggling with 18, 20 position. Spoke with me in my office and he said, sir, you are not like this. <sighs> As if I'm like this, will you come to me? If I was the way I was before, you would come. He came because you saw something different. He said, ah, we spoke on that five minutes. He looked so stupid. Between me, two of us, we are talking like this. He said, sir, you are not like this, though. As if I'm like that, will you come to me? There should be a difference between the person who is born again and the one you know before. That's how he became a member of this church. Now listen, I'm not talking about you have accumulated certificates. Looking for a job. Create jobs. After this impartation, you'll never be where you used to be. You can't write an exam and be copied from sinners. No, it will end today. After this impartation, your brain will spark open. Amen. I want your heart to be set because you have entered the practical realm. You have struggled and struggled and struggled. Just one small chaos. You are doing the business like this is the whole world. There has to be mental what? Impartation for exploits. One small chaos. I told a young man around me, he was, to, he was to do a small building of, you know, village, one small house. Just a three-bedroom apartment. The stress he gave to me. So I said, if they're not making commissioner for works, that means, <laughs> I said, for this small building of, the, you know, those they don't even draw. They just say, oh, put here one room. <laughs> put here one room. He almost wear me out. For, I said, for this small project, you are stressing me like this. They know, if they make you that commissioner for works, that means the governor who appointed you will not sleep. You say, governor, do I put one meter? 
the, the man will sack you. Now, many of us are looking for big things with poor mental capacity. You can't use an headmaster's brain to become a vice chancellor. Even if you are the best headmaster. <laughs> Do you understand? You have problems. You have what? You turn the university to primary school. <laughs> and Christians don't ask for mental growth. They just, I need position. I need position. I need position. <laughs> if they give you office that your head can't carry, it will become load. But look at what happened. So get angry. Because I was angry. I, I told myself, I said, I don't want to be stupid. I don't want to what? I knew I was stupid, so I told myself, I don't want to be stupid. Don't deceive yourself. If you're stupid, you're stupid. I knew I was stupid. Stupidity, I said, is not knowing who knows. Not learning from who knows. Yeah. Ignorance, you don't know. But stupidity is that you don't want to learn from somebody who knows. You know this person knows it, and you don't want to learn from the person. Are you going to say that? <laughs> so I was stupid before, too. Don't think I was not stupid. So I told myself, I, I need wisdom. I need what? I wish was from the Holy Spirit. Now turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 39, 34, so 34 verse 9. At this point, rise. There's no point. Let me rise. Copy the note while you're standing so you won't sleep. I want you to be very expectant. Very what? We are going to practical. So we are going to what? You are a healer of malaria. You are a healer of all the sickness now. Be healed of mental deficiency. And Joshua, the son of no, was full of the spirit of what? For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. After Moses laid hands, Joshua carried them. He didn't have the kind of power Moses had, but wisdom carried him. Before Solomon abused his wisdom, he didn't fight like David, his father. David fought and fought. That Bible is that his hand was carved before he died. Solomon did not fight like David. What was the distinguishing factor? Wisdom. When you meet a man impacted with wisdom, even his speech will tell you. I can say something and you follow me to say it, everyone will get angry, but my own, they will be laughing. The minister of the gospel told me, said, Sir, the thing I said that made the church, almost everybody left. I saw them, they were laughing on television. I say, hey, I can come here and say, don't give me money. Hold your money. And you'll be laughing. If a pastor under me, come here and say, don't give me money. Uh, nobody will give me pure that day. <laughs> don't follow me to say it. I'm operating at a different level of wisdom. That is, I say, if anybody follow me to just talk because I talk like that. <laughs> they say, pastor, is anyone not give you? You go, you go see Pepe. <laughs> it depends on the level of wisdom. Are you getting me? Now, from this day, put a hand here. Because I, nobody, everybody, nobody, I can't lay hands on everybody. Now, the spirit of wisdom answers to you. Yeah. I speak in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the custodian of wisdom, impact you with the wisdom of God. He said, he that lack wisdom, let him ask. Not that you don't have it, but the grade you have. Now listen, remove your hands. I was talking to a young man, and I said, what's the growth of what I handed over to you? He said, by 500. I said, no, it's too poor. I said, the reason is that you have to increase your capacity. Capacity cannot increase without wisdom. Without what? Can't increase the capacity of wisdom. There are people you talk to, talk to, they can't understand what you're talking. You talk, talk, they can't understand because of the level of wisdom. But when you meet a man of wisdom, when you talk, pop, the person will just say, This is what you're saying. Today, be impacted with the wisdom of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, 6 and 7, don't stop that, that key. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance 
that that stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by putting off my hands. So the gift of God is already in you. It's what? He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. So you already have it, but it has to be stirred up. It has to be what? That's what we are doing by the Holy Ghost. He said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a what? Sound mind. If this mind is sound, your life will be sound. I was, I flew with a man yesterday. We stood, we sat on the same seat. I said, Pastor, I'm coming for glory rain. When is the program? I told him. He said, I can't miss it. He said, because I've heard you speak. The kind of way you speak, this is a man that is globally recognized. I PA saw him. I won't call his name. He said, the way you spoke, I must come to that program. I said, you mix intellectualism with business with scriptures, you don't preach like just say with Bible. You come from an uncle that want to come and sit under you for some days. He's a Catholic, staunch Catholic. But I'm coming to see it because your kind of preaching is different. He said you talk in a different... Look, school is different. I'm not talking about school. If school is all you're working with, you can't succeed. You, you have a limit. You have a what? A limit. You go beyond school. To the Holy Ghost. Today. He said, God has not given us. Now put your hand there. Receive the spirit of sound mind. He said, God has not given. So he's the giver. Not me. Who is the giver? Now by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Everyone that reach up my voice globally. From this day, wherever you start to talk, they will see a new person emerge. that comes out of your mouth will be a word of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Amen. After this impartation, when you appear in the office or you appear in business place, you appear in school anywhere, those who used to lecture, you will lecture them. Amen. No matter who stands to talk, it is your own that will be carried. Amen. Receive in the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, Spirit. you are the giver. I receive the spirit of wisdom. With my hands on my head, let me be imparted with the wisdom of God. Now pray for yourself in the Holy Ghost. Those who can pray in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Put your hand and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray for your children also. Write their names and pray for them. Pray in the Holy Ghost and pray for your children in the name of Jesus. As you're praying for yourself, pray for your children. Lakute brege zia kutalo brege dia katala gadaga diga kushanto braga dia. Leku se kutale brege ti kato braga zia kushanto braga dia gada. Breke si kato brege dia katale gedia kushanto braga dia gada. Aru zesu le kri kato brege dia katale gedia kushanto braga dia katale brege dia kusaku. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Pray the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. La broke it here. Katale ge dia gasa katole. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. God gave Solomon, he gave Daniel, he gave Joseph, he gave Paul, he gave Jesus. It is the same one who gave them. Now he's the one. Your name will be included in that list. After this moment and this impartation, everyone that knew you will see a new person in my heart. Everyone you are standing up for, your children, your grandchildren, you are using yourself at the point of contact, I decree the same grace to answer to them. No student that my voice will struggle to understand. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every minister of the gospel impacted today, you have exploits wherever you go. Amen. Let me say this to you. Life is not more of struggle, it's more of wisdom. More of what? When you have sound mind, you have results more than others. The greatest secret of Adeboye is what? Wisdom. The greatest secret of Adeboye is what? Wisdom. 
My greatest skill is what? It's not strength. It's stronger than the weapons of war. Somebody can be very strong and you have more resources than the person. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, with this impartation, go and do exploits. As you get into your next assignment, the moment you open your mouth to talk, wisdom will express itself. I curse the root of foolishness in the name of Jesus. Nobody will identify with stupidity. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom by the Holy Ghost rests on you mightily. In Jesus' mighty name, give him thanks and praise. Give him thanks and praise. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Just know it is done. You don't have to feel any special goose pimple. It's just done. It's just what? It's done. There's somebody here with pain. Let me tell you how you know that you've gotten it. There's somebody here. Look at my hand with pain. Who's the person? God told me to see. You are the one with pain. Somebody's pain here. Now put your hand. Now pain leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Touch anywhere you had the pain. You'll be shocked. Pain will go. Touch it. Doctors or any medical person ask. Touch it. There will be no pain. Now the same way. I didn't shout. Did I shout? That's the same way. Don't feel that when you say you are here. You see wisdom. You don't no, you don't have to vibrate. Wisdom has been released. The same way healing took place. Wisdom has what? So I have the wisdom of God. Say it one more time. Confess it in faith. Say it one more time. And I will do S plus from today. Do you know with wisdom, you can never have crisis in your marriage. With wisdom, you can't fail in business. With wisdom, you cannot fail in school. Everything, wisdom has a role to play. Why am I not talking about politics now? Wisdom. What is it? If it's before, you know me. No, I'm, I don't talk about any politics. You say, what is it? That does not mean that if God tells me to talk to you, I will not talk. But for now, I'm not talking. What is it? Wisdom. I'm not going to talk about politics, nothing. Someone said, I should comment about River State. I said, it's not necessary. He was shocked. He said, sir, are you not making comment about River State? I said, it's not necessary. That's not what God called me to do. God told me to preach, not to comment about River State. I said, I don't make, I have no comment. I have no, what's my comment? What will I comment? Am I, am I a newscaster? <laughs> he said, comment about River State. And he was serious, so he's a new man of God. I said, sir, I have no comment. God did not tell me to comment about River State. Tell me to preach. So I'm preaching my gospel. But if it's before, you know me, I'll comment. I'll make one statement that the social media will go on opera. <laughs> the YouTube will be fighting on social media. It's not necessary. Is it necessary? I use that energy to be preparing a message. Simple. So when I say, oh, Nigeria, now I don't go here. This one, don't go here. Then you, the, the, the social media people will now misinterpret the two I talk. They will, YouTube will fight. You will go to and By wisdom, I just get quiet. You can't quote me because they say, Silence is never, you can't quote a man who is silent. And I'm silent by wisdom. By what? By wisdom. I won't talk any, don't worry yourself, I won't make any comment. Don't pray, sometimes I've taken a decision not to talk. Say wisdom. If not, you would have had many comments, me, before. <laughs> Say wisdom. I'm also growing, you grow every day, every day. It's not necessary, is it necessary? What am I going to talk about Nigeria? Let me preach so that God can exempt you from hardship. True? All I pray is God to exempt you from hardship. You will never be a victim. In the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 24, 30, 31, we're going to pray over the communion. The Bible says, and it came to pass as they sat at meat with, him, with them. As he sat at meat with them, he took bread. He took what? And blessed and break it and gave to them. It's, and their eyes were open. This eyes open is not talking about this physical eyes. It's talking about the eyes of your, your mind. And, he knew he, and they knew him and they vanished out of their sight. They were talking with Jesus, but they didn't know him. Lord, as I tell this community today, let every form of blockage be destroyed. Open my mental system. Open my mental what? Everything that makes me to be spiritually blind, I come against it with the flesh and blood of Jesus. Let my mind be what? Open. To know what you have for me in life. Is that true? Sincerely pray that prayer, stretch your heart toward the community, pray that prayer in the name of Jesus.
in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody that partakes of his flesh and blood, our eyes be open. Amen. No one will grow in darkness. Amen. Everyone shall have light Amen. and understanding shall come. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. To those who are sick, you will hear and get a scripture that will bring out of that sickness. Amen. The Holy Ghost will give you a word that will bring out of that challenge. Amen. And every habit that does not glorify God in us, as we take of flesh and blood, that habit dies. Amen. The glory of, above all, as we take of this communion, may heaven become our top. Amen. May we think of heaven as Christians. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give thanks to God for his word. You can't have the mind of Christ until you are born again. So repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. With my mouth, I confess you. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. If you offer that prayer, keep standing while others take their seats.